What's up? What's up? What's up, you guys? What's up? How you doing today? It's your gardening with Skinny Boy Randy. Hello. I miss you guys so much. Thank you. Thank you so much for being here. Welcome. Hello, my waiver backers. Hey, hope y'all are doing great. Hope you're having a great, growing, blessed, and prosperous day. It's your garden with Skinny Boy Randy. Hope you're having a great day. Thank you so much for being here. If you're new to the channel, yeah, I'm always this excited, even at home. Okay? <laughs> Thank you guys so much for being here. If you're new, click that like and subscribe button. Leave a thumbs up, thumbs down, just not the two middle fingers. Okay, okay? Thank you so much for being here. Also, if I can't answer a question here, drop on over to my Facebook group. And then come on back. That group is called Gardening with Skinny Boy Randy, where beginners and experts are welcome as well. You guys, it's about to storm out here. It's super duper hot. But yeah, that group, check them out on Facebook. They love having you guys over there. Leave a question. Let them know you came on over from YouTube. Also, check me out on Instagram and Twitter. And leave a comment, you guys. Share with all your social media. Yeah, I greatly appreciate it. It helps out the channel. But yes, today I just want to make a quick video for you. We are halfway through the growing season. Yes, pretty much no matter what zone you're in, you're pretty much halfway through the growing season. Yes, you guys, I'm in zone 7, Richmond, Virginia, and I'm halfway there. Yeah, a lot of the things in the garden. Hey, Princeton, everybody hears you. But yeah, a lot of things in the garden are starting to overgrow. They're starting to die off and I'm needing to make space to get my fall crops in. So this is what this video is all about. I'm going to give you 10 tips on starting your fall garden. This is for anybody, beginner or expert. Okay, okay. Because we ain't got no money to be going to expert school for the fall garden. We ain't got no money for the fall garden class at the, at the college. We ain't got no money for that. But thank y'all so much for being here. I love you. We have fun on this channel, you guys. Also, check out um, my other videos on cruising. I've been going on a couple of cruises, you guys. Sometimes you just need to get away from the garden. Yeah, I've been working hard for these past three years, so I just needed a break. So, so far, I've been on two this year, and i got two more planned and two more planned for next year. So, if you're interested in going, joining us, and having a great time, just hit me up on my messenger on Facebook, or just leave me a comment down below. But let's just dive right into the video, because I'm starting to sweat, and I beat a fell out. And come on back. Y'all know how to do it. Don't call 9 one YouTube this time. But okay, first thing you want to do is ask yourself, are you ready for a fall garden? To me, a fall garden is easier than the summer garden because in the fall, you're not growing a lot of fruit. You're not growing like tomatoes and peppers and cucumbers. You know, you're growing more leafy greens. So they are easier to harvest, easier to take care of, in my opinion, versus, you know, fertilizing those tomatoes and peppers. And, you know, yeah, during the summer, spring months, you have fruit coming, you know. During the winter, you have leafy greens coming, like your collards and your kales and, and your broccolis and things like that, which don't require a lot of picking you know, you just go and snip around the edges and it'll grow right on back. So first of all, thinking about uh, what you want to grow and the space that you have to grow it in. I think that was two tips, okay? Then, most importantly, you guys, find your first frost date. Your first frost date is the date that the Old Farmer's Almanac, if you go on Google and just type in Old Farmer's Almanac, it'll come right up, put in your zip code, it will give you your first frost date. And what that is, is an estimate of when the ground will start to freeze out, when the grass will start to look frozen, when you go to step on it, to get all crunchy. But it's just an estimate, like sometimes it doesn't come to November 15th. So, but it gives you an idea of how to start planning. So you just want to make sure, that's very important, check your first frost date, and then you're going to plant your seeds accordingly. All seed packets tell you when to plant, how many weeks before your first frost date. So if your first frost date is November 1st and it says plant six weeks before then, you're going to count backwards six weeks and that's when you'll start your seeds. Okay, so always follow your seed uh, instructions on the, on the seed pack. You guys, I couldn't make a video this past week because we had an invasion of July June bugs, as my uncle called them. Hey, Uncle Ike. But yeah, the June bugs invaded like the neighborhood. I mean, you could hear them banging up against the house and against the windows, up against your face, against your head. They can get stuck in your hair. It was horrible. I could not even make a video out here, y'all. I mean, literally, couldn't cut the grass, couldn't do, they were everywhere. So, sorry I haven't made a video, but one just flew by, go on out, see? Don't show off, because I'm on camera. But yeah, ooh, that's why I hadn't made a video in a couple of days, you guys. But back to what I was saying, I love you guys. Thank you so much for being here. Okay. 
Think about if you're going to be starting your seedlings indoors or outdoors. There are a lot of things that you can start outdoors. I'm going to be making another video right after this one telling you everything to plant, when to plant, you know, depending on what zone you're in. But yeah, think about if you're going to start your seedlings indoors. If you have a greenhouse, you can start them outdoors. Or if you have an area where it doesn't get too hot, you can just leave them on the balcony, let them germinate, and you don't even have to harden them off, which means taking them from the inside under the grow lights and getting them acclimated to the outside. But that's a whole other video. You can check that out. And then you want to think about when they do germinate, are you going to grow them in containers or are you going to put them in your raised beds? You know, like collard greens, the more space, and I learned that broccoli and, and things like that, the more space they have apart, they really get bigger. And I overcrowded mine, so they stayed medium one year, but this year I spaced them out and they got huge. So think about your spacing, how much space do you have. Don't overplant collards and you know collards can get really really big and depending on what kind of collard or kale or whatever type of leafy green you like that you're going to plant just make sure you have room for it so they don't crowd each other out and you know don't give you the the biggest harvest you can get and make sure your soil conditions are good i always like to uh retill my soil i have a little electric tiller that i use or you can just use your garden hoe and just go through there and till it till it up with that and just add to some amendments if you don't want to use uh fertilizers if you're totally organic get you an organic fertilizer or make your own compost um that's another whole video you can pull that up as well but yeah just till your soil over and get it fresh all over again and then think about your watering. Who's going to be watering your garden? A lot of times when it starts to snow, the ground waters itself with the snow. But in between times, you're going to be thinking about watering your seedlings and keeping them, them watered. And that's a job, y'all. Keeping those seedlings watered when you first plant the seedlings. That's what I'm talking about for those new gardeners. The seedlings are when you start the seeds and they start to grow. You have to keep them watered. You can't let them dry out or they'll die on you. And then think about how you're going to be feeding your garden what you're growing, how much fertilizer, if it needs any fertilizer, you know, think about that. And then the last but least, just think about your location, what you're going to grow, and how you're going to maintain it. So this was short, sweet, and to the point. I hope, hope this helps you out just a little bit for my brand new gardeners and even the experienced gardener. We're here to help you get your fall gardening started. Okay, you guys, I love you. Thank you so much for being here. Remember, live, love, life, grow stuff and eat it. I'm out of here. Bye.